Oh man, episode 13. Uh, we're going to talk about, um, you know, Puerto Rico. Um, we're also going to talk about that piece on Very Smart Brothers, Straight Black Men and the White People of Black People. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit, try to, before we get to Secret Empire, we're going to give you a little bit of background. And also, we're going to talk about low end theory. Check it out. All of us are born with the miraculous ability to determine the direction from which sounds approach us. Let us venture into new and uncharted land. People get shook up, you know, when I'm introduced as God. You got that good hair, too. You're the first one out there with a dashiki talking that crap. It's like a jungle sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep them going. It's like a jungle sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep them going. I pull up, I bought, air route, made it look sexy They won't take me on my element, nah, take me on my element Uh, just, ah, uh, just, oh, I know everybody had their two cents in And, um, I, let me just say this, I don't, I watch, I watch some boxing and I might watch some UFC But overall, I stopped watching sports on the professional level since 1999 it's just there's several reasons for that. anyway not important just just this weekend on sunday with the nfl and the you know going down on one knee like i it felt fake as fuck i'm sorry i'm, I'm sorry i know that people are like oh solidarity is just like it went from you know shout out to colin kaepernick first of all that's probably the only jersey i wear shout out to colin kaepernick word is born shout out to him right but did I ever think that the NFL would hire him back? No. Um, did I ever think the NFL would ever take a stance against police brutality? No. But all of a sudden, all these people are taking knees because 45 says some wild shit. Which he does. He does literally every fucking day. He says some wild shit every day. So it's not like, you know, and it was what, what, one, thing, one thing that I dislike about the whole Donald Trump thing is that now we all have like a villain. Everybody has a villain now that we could point all the stuff to. And I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm not at all, by far. I, I'm from New York City. Donald Trump has been a troll since I was a kid. So I'm not even going to go there. But now everybody has somebody that could point that. And we could all agree he's not a good guy. That The people that, that follow him and support him are trolls, right? We can sit here and say that. But it went from, you know, Colin Kaepernick's... Um, you know, approach to protesting police brutality, right? And and talking about Black Lives Matter, it went from that to let's take a knee because the president said some wild shit about us. Like, like, nah, man, like that shit is a straight hijacking. So as it was going on, um, I was just sitting there like thinking about public enemy. Don't believe the hype. Ugh, don't. Dun, dun, don't believe the hype. That's, that's how I look at it as work. Begging Billy, Billy likes to beg, he's very silly. Remember that song? Hey, man, I don't want to beg, but um, please, iTunes, man. If you subscribe to me on iTunes or to us on Where My Killer Tape At, go to the iTunes purple app, scroll down, find my joint, go to more episodes, scroll down, and put a review. And it got to be five stars, man, but hook a brother up, even if you don't like it. Hit, me, hit it up with some stars. You know, throw a little comment in there, too, man. I'm not asking for a lot, man. I ain't asking for money yet. You know what I'm saying? So, at least be thankful for that. Word. Yeah. 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 I think Uh, I don't want to geek out on this, but uh, I got to. Um, we're going to talk about Secret Empire, but before I do that, I got to give like some background. So what I'm not going to do is I'm actually not going to talk about Secret Empire, other than the fact that everybody's on the internet wilding out about it. 
Um, it's a 10 issue. I'm going to say it's 11 issue because they have um, the first 10 issues. Actually, I say 12 issues, actually, because it starts at zero. It ends at 10. And then they have uh, uh, Aftermath, which I got to check out. Um, I haven't seen it ready yet. But um, pretty much it's about how this Captain America is becomes an agent of Hydra, moves up in the ranks, takes over Hydra, and then takes over the world pretty much, right? Really the United States, but he has a world by the balls pretty much. So um, people are like, how the fuck that happened? And Captain America would never be an agent of Hydra. Well, there's some background to that. Um, and these, and I think it's highly recommended that you all read uh, Nick Spencer's run on Captain America, um, Sam Wilson, which is actually a very, very, very dope run. And his, um, which actually I slept on the Captain America, Steve Rogers run by Nick Spencer. Cause I was like, come on, man. I ain't trying to see that again. Cause the Sam Wilson run is really good, but actually the Captain America, Steve Rogers run is dope. And you have to read that before you read Secret Empire, right? Um, and then just rewind a little bit, and I'm going to give you the background on this. So this Secret Empire thing is going to take probably a couple of episodes of um, where my killer tape at. But anyway, here's the deal. So um, there was this thing called Pleasant Hill. It was like a crossover series. And, and I got something else to talk about. In the crossover series, Pleasant Hill, um, S.H.I.E.L.D., Um, created this prison using a cosmic cube now what happened was while they were messing with the cosmic cube um it became sentient right meaning it became like a person and it turned into Kobik, a little girl now the thing about the little girl was um while they was easy it was easy to manipulate her because the cosmic cube was a little girl the little girl remembered when red skull had her So she went to the Red Skull, and of course, the Red Skull being the Red Skull, the Red Skull also manipulated her into thinking that Hydra was the shit. So he was like, but don't reveal yourself, you know, just do it on the low. So she was doing little things, you know, being manipulated by Red Skull. And so, again, S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, Maria Hill, who I actually love. I love Maria Hill. You know, what people may say about, I I don't like the MCU Maria Hill. I like the comic book Maria Hill. I really love Maria Hill. Um, anyway, uh, I'll talk about that some other time, but they create this prison and what they do is it's like a little town called Pleasant Hill and they take super criminals and they brainwash them using the cosmic cube and have them thinking that they are citizens of this town. Um, so it's, it's crazy. It's, um, it's, um, so pretty much what they'll do is they'll take a, a super villain, they'll brainwash him or they rearrange his memories because the cosmic cube kind of rearranges your memories and your reality and they'll make you like a post office worker or a barista and you go to this into this town and you're none the wiser and the town is kind of like controlled by agents of shield right so um superheroes found out about it they busted open um a lot of supervillains got away and during this time steve rogers he had lost a super soldier serum so he was like old man steve rogers right um he goes in there and he gets attacked by crossbones and crossbones like beats his ass and then Kobik shows up and Kobik gives him back his super soldier serum, but she changes his reality and has him thinking that he's an agent of Hydra. And that happens in Pleasant Hill. And that isn't revealed until Nick Spencer's um, Captain America run, issue number one. And that's the one everybody was hyped about. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that right there um, before we get into Secret Empire. But just gives you a little bit of background on that word. Before I get into the, you know, um, Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, just real quick, um, definitely shout out to my Puerto Rican fan. Um, I came up around a lot of Puerto Ricans um, living in the Lower East Side of Manhattan and later on <clears throat> the Sambu section of the Bronx and um, going to school in Harlem. Like really half the cats I came up with were Puerto Rican because um, my mom, she didn't, we didn't live in like predominantly Dominican spaces. Um, we lived in like, it was like half Puerto Rican, half um, black. So I've always loved um, Puerto Rican folks. They always treated me like family to this day. I've been there. Um, beautiful, beautiful island. And I'm not on some old tourist shit, right? Because people could say, yo, I've been to Jamaica. But they actually just been to Ocho Rios. You know what I'm saying? They actually they would go to Jamaica. They went to a resort. So I've been to Puerto Rico, like the hood and everything. And I've been to like dope places 
that the tourists usually don't go to, and I ate with the people. So shout out to my Borica fam. Um, and it's real crazy, but we're going to get into something real quick. So check it. First off, like, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about how um, Puerto Rico was like the 51st state, which technically on paper, it kind of sort of is. It's the Commonwealth of the United States. Um, they have pretty much the same rights as any U.S. citizen, except except their vote, like when they vote, doesn't count. Um, and there's a couple of other things that are not notable about their status. But if you are born in Puerto Rico, you are considered a U.S. citizen. You can join the U.S. Armed Forces. Um, you can, you know, you have access to the same um, things that the average U.S. citizen, are, you know, have access to. Um, but what I'm seeing is that, and that's an ignorance on a lot of people's part. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that, you know, um, they teach English in their schools. So that's why a lot of Puerto Ricans, when they come to the United States, they already know how to speak English. Um, so there's just a lot of things that a lot of people don't know about Puerto Rico when it comes to their legal status. Um, and that's, this is where, uh, this is where it gets real touchy, right? Um, because it's kind of like it was originally a territory of the United States after the 1898 Spanish-American War. Um, and then later on, it became a commonwealth. And every couple of years or so, Puerto Ricans were allowed to to vote um, in whether they, it could be either three things. Either Puerto Rico could become an independent state or it could become a state of, of the United States or it could become a commonwealth. Um, in the last 15 years, they actually the United States took out one thing that said... They can become an independent state. Now they can vote to become either a state or a commonwealth. Um, and there's just a lot of th things that you have to look at legally. I recommend looking that up. Um, that being said, there are a lot of people who are like talking about how, you know, first of all, right now, the, uh, Puerto Rico does not have any power. So it's an island of 3.5 million people. Um, it's probably, if you compare it to other states in the United States, it has, this population is bigger than many states in the, in the union, right? Um, but I, what I notice is that people are saying, oh, this is an American state or like an American state, like, right? Um, and they're saying that we should pay more attention to it. And while there's a lot of truth in that, right? It, it is, you know, you can go down there and there's a lot of things that are American, but it's still Puerto Rico. Like, you know, you're in Puerto Rico, right? But um, it's this idea of privilege, right? So first of all, every human is is, is something, right? They're, they're, they're humans, right? So like, whether you live in Puerto Rico, whether you live in France, whether you live in Senegal, whether you live in Madagascar, whether you live in Peru, you're still a human being and you deserve to be treated as such. So everybody is, well, is deserving of that. So I believe we should give as much support that we can to anybody in a dire situation like what we just had with Hurricane Maria. So that's, that's a fact, right? But what I see people doing is saying, oh, my God, this is like a state of the United States and we should treat it as such, et cetera. So it shouldn't have power. And um, there are parts of the United States that are really like fucked up. Right. <laughs> like, tr trust me, there's, there's still parts of the United States that are like really piss poor. Right. Um, I mean, you could travel through Mississippi and you'll find places that you're like, what the hell? So, and you know, no disrespect to Mississippi at all. But just to give you a heads up that and I don't think people should treat them. Like, ooh, you know, they're special because they're, they're American. And they are American, right? Um, but at the same time, um, that's not why we should be looking out for people. We should be looking out for them because they are fellow human beings. So people ask, um, when it comes to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, how do I help out? Um, I know you want to donate, and that's probably the most easiest thing you can do. Um, I highly recommend going to diasporicans.com, and that's spelled D-I-A, S is in Sam, P-O-R-I-C is in cat, A-N is in Nancy, S is in Sam.com. Once again, diasporicans.com. It's a dope website. It, that shows you in the United States where you can actually drop stuff off. And it doesn't have to be money. Um, and it even asks you if you want to host a donation center. So if you want to, if you work for a church or a nonprofit or you're at a school, you can be a place that you can um, bring um, donations and stuff. 
And of course, they need bottled water, baby wipes, hand sanitizer, diapers, canned foods, dry foods, baby formula, garbage bags, towels, canned milk, first aid kits, laundry detergent. I mean, just a host of things that they need, you know, blankets, pillows, mosquito repellent. Um, there's just a host of things that they could bring that you can buy yourself and you can donate um, and drop off at these centers. What's also cool is that they have a list, a map of places in Puerto Rico that you can still send donations with credit or debit cards. And then they also have other places where you could donate a list of them. Like, for example, there is the Friends of Puerto Rico hyphen Hurricane Maria Recovery Fund. Um, they also have Connect Relief Donation, Loisa Lu 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 Hurricane Relief Fundraiser. And this is thing go on and on. It's very helpful. Whoever we'll put this together is a dope idea. Actually, I'm checking it out right now, um, and you can go there. Um, Unidos por Puerto Rico is kind of like a, a coalition of groups. So if you go to diasporicans.com, Diaspor I'm sorry, you can go ahead and donate there to folks that are on the ground right now. Um, and if you have any other ideas, you know, definitely spread it out on Twitter and Facebook. But once again, shout out to my Borican fam. Yo, it's funny, man, how like you could throw an adjective in front of something and you could like really disrespect somebody, right? <clears throat> For example, and people be like, they use little, right? They'll be like, man, take go with you and your little friends and go over there. You'd be like, what? Just imagine if they just said, why don't you and your friends just go on out of here? You, you probably want to be as mad, but they're like, why don't you take you and your little friends to get up out of here? You're like, what? You want to fight? You know what I'm saying? So I think that's crazy. People will be like, and sometimes people might not have any bad intentions, but just putting little in front of it would, would like, really, people feel disrespected. I've seen it happen. You know, you'd be like, why don't you take that little book with you and take it outside? And they're like, what? What you say about my book? And the book is like two inches big, right? They're like, what you say about my book? What you say about my book is little? And I guess because saying little diminishes certain things. I guess that's why some rappers who came out with little, like Lil Wayne, they changed the name to like Wheezy. But then again, Wheezy sounds really diminished as well. Oh, well, but just be careful what you say out there. Again, another week of how to approach women. Man, this is probably the only segment that I continuously do since episode one. Um, somebody emailed this question and well, they tweeted this question and well, they DM this question. What am I talking about? They asked, how do you know if someone is interested in you? And that's a good question, man, because a lot of times we think somebody's interested in us, but they're actually not. Um, a lot of times you're in a, a public place and you look across the room and you see someone looking at you and you think, oh, okay, they're feeling me. And then when you approach them, you learn that they're not. Um, so I'm going to give you some ideas and some tips. But first of all, the first number one real thing is that we do not know 100% sure if that person is interested in us. You know, um, it could be any number of things, right? It could be somebody, they might th they might have thought you were somebody else. That happens a lot. You, you know, I, I know I do. I know I see you. I'm like, oh, that's my man. Oh, that's my homie. Yo, what's up? Like, so for a lot of people, it could be they just thought you were somebody else. Um, number two, check your surroundings, man. Like, I know a lot of times when you're at a public place, for example, if you're at a bar and there's like a game on, you know what I mean? If you're sitting by the TV, everyone's going to be looking in your direction. It's going to seem like sometimes everybody's looking at you. So just pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that goes for like, there might be a person sitting next to you that they know or a person sitting next to you that they are interested in. And, you know, you just happen to be in that general direction when they're looking. So it may seem that way. So just, you know, check your surroundings, right? If you're by the bathroom, um, if you're by the entrance, you know, they're going to be, everybody's going to be looking in your direction. So it's going to seem that way, right? So, you know, you might want to pay attention to those kind of things. So, you know, check your surroundings. 
Um, and number number three, they might have looked at you and stared at you, thought you was interesting, but then when you moved a particular way, they realized you're not that interesting. Or if you moved in the light, you're probably not that attractive. So there's that possibility as well, right? And finally, the other possibility is you might be tripping. I mean, I know there are times, you know, when you think something happened, you, you think something, you think somebody said something to you, and they actually didn't. And you tripping. It happens all the time. It happens. I see it happen every day where someone thinks someone is looking at them in a particular way or somebody says something to them and they don't not actually speaking to them or looking at them. Right. For whatever reason. And we take it personal. So, you know, there's that possibility that you might be tripping. Anyway, if you're not by the TV or by the bathroom or by the entrance and there's nobody sitting next to you or the person sitting next to you is asleep there's a possibility they might be interested in you. And one thing I do is, um, what I recommend you doing is trying to get a response from, you know, from that distance. So maybe looking back at that person and smiling, um, and that person might smile back. If that person smiles back, they're acknowledging that you're looking at them. At the same time, they might just be polite, because I know I'm the type of person that if you say hi to me, I'm going to say hi. If you smile at me, I'm going to smile at you. And it's just that's just the way I was raised. So that might be a possibility too. So you might put that in there. But anyway, try to make some, some kind of gesture that you're interested. Um, you know, raise your hand and say hello or, you know, hold your drink up or whatever. And if they respond, it's clear that they um, that they are doing that, right? That they, they're they interested in you. Um, at the same time, they might, you know, they might not. They might not be. They might just be acknowledging that. Anyway, rule of thumb is the best thing to do is shoot your shot. Um, because a lot of times you really can't tell. And sometimes we're really bad. A lot of us are bad at picking up signals. So just say what's up. Shoot your shot. Um, that's the only way you're going to find out for sure. Well, that ends our segment. For for health, this is something that um a lot of people have hollered me about, hollered at me about, excuse me, and I needed to touch upon it, and um I think it's very important, and um, and and, and it's something that is really easy to get away from. When we get to the hustle and the bustle of our lives, right? We get caught up with work and school, family and everything, and um and this is really nature, like nature, like what I mean by that is going outside, like. When's the last time you go out, you went outside and you saw the sunset, right? Or when did you see it rise, right? Or when's the last time you're going outside and just look at the stars? And I know some of us live in places where we can't see the stars, right? Like in New York City, right? But I don't. I'm Thankfully, I live in a place where I can actually see the stars at night. Um, and just those things, man, like hiking. like. And when I mean by hiking, I don't mean you got to put a backpack on and get a staff and, and walk through the woods. A lot of places have hiking trails nearby, even in New York. New York City, you have hiking trails, and you can do those hiking trails and just be be around nature, man. Just be around, like, smell something funny, man, because nature smells very different from where you regularly live. And I noticed, I just noticed a lot of things, man. Like, I noticed that, and I know that the earth is getting warmer, um, but I noticed that, like, for example, when it's, like, mad hot, we'll, like, be in a space that's, like, super air conditioned. Like, it'll be, like, mad air conditioning you know we jump in our cars right mad air conditioning and then go to work in places that are like mad air conditioning go to school and this is like mad air conditioning right and then you go outside and it's like 82 degrees it's not even that humid and people are like yo it's mad hot out here it's mad hot out here and it's because you don't be outside like that man like go outside man like you know go bike riding you know go jogging go walking walking is probably the best thing you could do for yourself man just go walking just Smell the flowers and the trees, you know what I mean? Like, take your shoes off, put it in the grass, you know? Um, you know, put your hands in some mud. I know people are like, ew, kid, I'm not going to do that. But, yo, go back to nature, man. That's just mad healthy, man. It's just really, really for real, for real, mad healthy, man. You know, if you get a chance to go to the beach, go to the beach and jump in the water or go into a freshwater lake. Like, yo, just do nature stuff, man. And I know that I sound like I'm some sort of hippie. And if I do, you know, who cares, right? But, yo, nature is dope, man. You know, hearing the crickets like you hear in the background, like, that shit is dope, man. It can't get doper than that. So, yo, man, let's go outside and do some nature stuff. Yeah. 
Yo, one thing that like gets on my nerves, and this has been happening to me for decades, right? Particularly when when I left like New York City um, back in the 90s, like when I traveled to different places, everybody be like, oh man, you Spanish. Yo, you Spanish, right? Hey man, I know your peoples are Spanish, right? Oh yo, I love being with, you know, yo, I get down with everybody, black, white, Spanish, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and they do it in New York too. They be like, oh, a Spanish cat over there, a Spanish kid over there. Yo, his peoples are Spanish. Like, no. I'm not from Spain. And the way you Spanish is he from some Spain. Now, check it out. Here's the analogy, right? Right? Here it, here it is. All of us speak English, right, in the United States. Well, most of us, right? We, the, the common official language is, is English, right? You go to the UK, common language is English, right? You go to Jamaica, common language is English, right? Okay. You don't call none of those people English, right? You don't be like, oh, yo, you English, right? Yo, them English people over there, right? Unless you're from the UK, right? When you're from the UK... You, they be like, yo, you English or you British, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, because you were born there, that's your nationality, right? So, same thing. You Spanish only if you were born in Spain or you were a citizen of Spain, you know what I mean? So, like, just because I speak Spanish, just like you speak English, right, With whether you're from New York or Florida, right, I don't be like, yo, you English, so you shouldn't be like, yo, you Spanish, right? And it's, it's, it's whack. It's whack, yo. Yo, rep- represent where I'm from, man. My folks are from Dominican Republic. I was born in New York, right? I feel Latino, my G. Come on, man. Chill. Just got to real quick say that uh, as of this recording, I'm recording this on November 24th. You'll probably hear it um, a couple days afterward. But I think it's important to note that um, we're going to celebrate um, the Trap Call Quest low end theory. Definitely this segment is dedicated to the late grade five dog who we lost last year. Um, but anyway, low end theory was their second album as a group. And it's funny because when they did their first album, the Stick to Travels, um, it was actually called Q-Tip in a Tribe Called Quest. But when they came out with Low End Theory, it became a Tribe Called Quest or ATCQ. Um, and it pretty, really, like, this album, like, solidified Fife as as a dope MC. Like, before, he seemed like he played second fiddle to Q-Tip. So we definitely see that happen here on this one. Anyway, um, it was a dope album. Um you had songs like, you know, Excursions, which was the beginning. Um, I know my favorite was um, um, the infamous Date Rape, classic example of a, a date rape, right? Um, and then, of course, um, the scenario was probably, cause to me, one of the greatest posse cuts ever. Um, yes, yeah, better than the Juice Crew's um, so, um, song together. Like, I think this was the best one with... Um, you know, with um, leaders of the new school. So I'm, I'll argue, I'll fight anybody in the street with that. Um, and then there's, you know, of course, one that me and my son always sing, back in the day when I was a teenager, before I had status and before I had a pager, that joint. So that's my joint right there. Of course, you had the classic Fife verse on Bugging Out. Um, he killed that joint. So, but, and then they had that, I think one of the singles was Check the Rhyme, y'all. Right, so um, I mean, just so many hits, just so many dope hits on that. And again, it came out 26 years ago in 1991, September 24th, 1991 is when it came out. So, y'all know I'm a big Native Tongues fan, and you know that I love a tribe called Quest. Word. talk about this article that I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all are tired of discussing, but I think it's, I think it's important that we discuss it. Um, a couple, about a week ago, Very Straight Brothers, actually about a couple of days ago, I'm going to say four or five days ago, Very Smart Brothers published an article by uh, Damon Young, or Damon Young, I could be getting his name wrong, um, but he is on Twitter, um, and the name of his article are Straight Black Men are the White People of Black People. And, man, people were all over the Internet, wilding out, disagreeing. Now, don't get me wrong, I haven't been on the street 
on it. Um, I get my hair cut this week, so I'm going to talk to some of the brothers about that. Um, and that's who I should be talking to about it, the brothers, right? Um, and just, I do self-identify as a black man. So just to, <clears throat> to, to put that out there for those of you that don't know, who don't know me personally, I do self-ID as a black man. That being said, um, I definitely agree with uh, Mr. Young. I'm straight black man, all the white people love black people. But what does he mean by that, right? <clears throat> well, it's simple. Let's say, for example, um, you're talking about police brutality, right? Against black people, right? Black and brown people. And you, and, you know, you're at, you're at work and one of your white co-workers is like, well, I'm not racist. I'm not like that. So you can't lump me in that group of people. And you're like, okay, I feel you, but that's not the point. You know, white supremacy is something that all white people benefit from. Um, and you being a not racist white person, non-racist white person doesn't mean that it should fix the problem. We're not talking about you. We're talking about the racism that white people put on everybody else. Right. So we always have that, that, that debate. Right. You always when you talk about race, you have white people that try to be like, well, I don't like that. I don't use the N word and et cetera, et cetera. But meanwhile, they, you know, they vote for policies that are racist. Right. So. At the same time, they're, it's really they're trying to center themselves in the oppression by, by saying that they're not like the ones, to, you know, like, for example, Charlottesville, right? Um, they're going to be like, well, I don't get down with those people, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, that's their uncle that's going over there. That's their cousin, right? That's their college frat brother right there, right? That's the cat that they play fantasy football with, right? Those are the people they hang out with. So while, yeah, that person in of itself may not be that way, right, but they still hang out with people and allow that discourse to happen, a lot of stuff to continue uh, because, you know, those people are family or whatever, whatever. So same thing happens when a woman discusses, a black woman discusses being sexually assaulted by, you know, someone in her family, right? Or being harassed by people on the street corner, right? Or going to, you know, uh, being slut shamed by someone because they didn't want to have sex with them. When a black woman says, well, you know, it was a black man that did this, a lot of us will try to um, try to like negate her experience by saying, well, I'm not like that. Well, I'm a nice black man. I don't do that. Well, I don't call women bitches and hoes and I don't treat my woman like that. I don't beat on my wife. OK. All right. You may not do that, which is which you're not supposed to be doing. Right. But um, you know, what I mean, you're not supposed to be doing those kind of things. Right. You're like beating on your woman or whatever or disrespecting black women. True indeed. But that doesn't mean that her experience is negated. It doesn't mean that. Um, you know, that didn't happen. Um, and instead of saying, instead of trying to be like, damn, that's fucked up, you know, what can I do to help? Or damn, man, you know, that's, I feel for you or whatever, whatever they need for us to do, instead of doing that, we end up trying to negate the experience, right? Oh, don't, you know, you're making us look bad in front of white people. You do all the same things, you know, gaslighting. You know what gaslighting is? Look that up. Go online and look up gaslighting and see what it is. And that's the stuff racist people do when they try not to fun like they're racist. Well, I've never used the N-word. Well, I never called a woman a bitch. Well, I never hit a woman. You know, well, okay, that's fine and good. You're not supposed to do those things, but those things do happen, right? If we're having, um, you know, here's the crazy part. Um, black women, if they, if they are murdered, is usually at the hands of a significant other, be it a husband, ex-husband, boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, someone they're dating. And let's be honest, we got the numbers the number one killer of black women are black men. And that's facts, right? That's the truth, right? And we can sit here all day and try to be like, well, I don't do that. You know, again, that's fine and good, but that's not what the discussion is about, right? We're not talking about, if we're talking about people that run red lights, we're not going to say, oh, I don't run red lights. You know, I wait till the light turn green. Well, we're not talking about that. Right. And we need to talk about the people that run red lights and we need to talk about how to get people to stop running red lights. And it's the same idea. Right. We need to stop instead of saying, well, I don't do that. And then try to shovel everything, put it under the rug. We need to address those issues. Right. Brothers, we really need to discuss it. We really need to talk about that. You know, if it, and I'm telling you, do this, do me this favor, do me this favor, go into a room full of black women. Right. And ask them how many of them have been sexually assaulted. Ask them. And then ask them who did it. And look, you shouldn't be surprised. You shouldn't be surprised. But it's going to hurt your heart. You know what I mean? And, and, and if that's happening, who's doing it? You know, go to your barbershop. And I've done this before. Go to your barbershop and talk about domestic violence. 
and ask who's in here to put their hands on a woman. And again, don't be surprised. But you're going to be surprised at how many men have raised their hand. And that's facts. And that's truth, right? And again, you may not do it. You listening right now may not do those kind of things, right? But that's not what the discussion is about, right? And that's why you should read this article and really do some soul searching. You know, and look, I don't do those things. But I have to look at my brother. I'm his keeper. And I have to be like, yo, what the fuck is going on? And we need to start having those discussions. Because if we keep gaslighting, if we keep denying it, if we keep sweeping stuff under the rug, we'll never fix those problems, man. Straight up. I only got two shout outs this week. Um, actually, three. Uh, the first one is to my man, Charles Burkell of the love experiment aka the black samurai man follow him on on um, instagram is the black samurai he's been dying to come on the show he's a dope producer young cat i mean my man put in work man i'm proud of that brother man for real for real congratulations i love you and miss you um and also uh to my man duzino who just got promoted again he got another chord yo man i love and i miss you brother um you've been somebody who's been very supportive Somebody who's just been showing me mad love just off the rip, man. So I appreciate you and love you. And, of course, I got to give my girl Steph uh, mad love from um, the Dope Science Show. What's up with the hoodies, kid? Like, yo, she always showing her brother love. And I really appreciate it. I'll see y'all later. So definitely, um, I appreciate y'all listening to the show. Um, man, episode 13, I got a lot of love. Man, like, man, bad love. And I really appreciate y'all. I mean, I really do. So um, I didn't get the iTunes reviews, but that's okay. Um, I appreciate that y'all coming up, hitting me up on the street. Um, people saying, what's up? It's just been a dope, dope adventure. Uh, again, I got gear coming up. Just got to take my time on it. Um, still putting designs down because I'm going to be doing everything out the house. So it's not like you're going to be able to order it from like Cafe Press or whatever. No, no shots. No shot. But again, I'll see y'all next week, man. Peace.